Hi everyone, and welcome again to Know, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we're also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Safa, and today we're investigating the fundamentals behind a key numerical optimization procedure that Excel actually uses whenever you are, are doing solver optimization with uh, the GRG nonlinear feature, which is gradient descent. So essentially today we'll learn the concept behind gradient descent explicitly, and we'll see how to implement gradient descent without any additional tools or features, so you can better understand what goes inside this quote unquote black box. We have what a function of two variables here, and it's a nonlinear function, uh, x squared plus 2x plus y squared plus 5y minus x times y, and we'll try to find the minimum of this function by using the logic of gradient descent. First, we need to start with some initial point, some initial coordinates of x and y. So here we set x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. And the first step would be to figure out the value of the function at this particular point for these particular values of x and y. So it's x squared plus 2 times x plus y squared plus 5 times y minus x times y. And we see that the value of this function is 0 at this particular point. And we see that if we change the values, then the function uh, changes as well. Now, we need to implement uh, the incremental steps in x and y to figure out how the function grows with those incremental changes of our independent variables, and uh, how fast does it grow corresponding to growth in x and y, to basically find the gradient, the speed of function growth in each direction, with x or with y. So essentially, we have to implement two step um, variables, so those are the parameters that would guide the speed and the precision of our gradient descent algorithm. And uh, I do recommend to make step one, which is basically the step with which the variables change each time with each iteration, to be as small as uh, uh, you can, as you uh, are allowed to make it, uh, as it's possible to make it. So let's say we have got uh, an exponent of minus 10, which is like a very, very small number. So I would advise uh, in making the step one variable, which is essentially uh, the step that the independent variables uh, change by with each iteration, as small as possible, because that would make the optimization uh, more precise. But let's start with something visible, let's say a 100th, so 0 0.01, and uh, we'll change our x by that, and our y by that as well. And now our goal is to evaluate the function with changed values of x and y uh, independently. So essentially, it will be first uh, changed x, but y will remain unchanged for the first bit. So this essentially changes just the x value and leaves y value as it was. And now the same thing, but for y being changed. And we see that the function does grow quite a bit more when you increase y by 0 0.01, rather than when you increase x by 0 0.01. And to incorporate that, let's figure out what is the growth of uh, the function at the point 0, 0, when you increase x and y by some um, small amount. So essentially, those would be empirical derivatives of the function with respect to x and with respect to y. And these two numbers will give us the gradient that will inform the next iteration of our gradient descent. So for the growth of x, we figure out what is the 
growth of the function per unit of movement with the x. So we see that x, um, a unit change in x result in a function growing by 2.01. And if we look at the growth in the direction of y, we'll see that it grows by 5.01 with a unit increase in y. So those are the um, empirical derivatives with respect to x and y, and those are the um, gradient vector elements for our optimization. And now we need to implement the second step variable, which basically tells us how fast do we move um, according to the gradient from iteration to iteration. This uh, can be reasonably large, so let me start with a value of, say, 0 0.1. So here, if we're looking for the minimum of the function, then we need to move backwards. So essentially, the function grows in this direction, and we want it to decrease if we find the minimum. So we subtract the growth rate of x times the step. So essentially, as the function grows, uh, by 2.01, with a unit increase in x, we'll reduce x by this growth rate times the step parameter. And now, for the second iteration, our x value would be minus 0 0.2. And the same, and the same can be done for y. So here, we change our y variable from the previous iteration uh, by subtracting the growth rate times the step variable. The beautiful thing here is that we can enforce the remaining calculations uh, by just dragging the formulas down because they would automatically update everything. And now we can bottom right click it to see whether the function converges to some optimal value. And we can see that with 20 iterations, the function still does change quite uh, a lot from iteration to iteration. We do definitely get to lower values of the function but uh, y and x still change iteration from iteration there. So our uh, choice can be either to increase the number of iterations we go for. We, let's do just that. Let's say go for 100 iterations. And in this case, we see that with 100 iterations, the convergence does stop. And we reach the minimum level of our function as minus 13 and the values of x and y at minus 3.01 and minus 4.01. Uh, but uh, remember what I told you about the step um, parameter, that the lower it is, the more precise your um, final values are. So let's try 1,000th. In this case, uh, our parameters, in this case, our variables at the final iteration would be minus 4.001, minus 3.001. So essentially, if we implement as small of a number as we can, say the exponent of minus 10, which would be a very, very small number, then our uh, final values are even more precise than that. And if we play around with a step, say increase it to 0 0.5, then we see that our iteration is even faster. So we converge to the uh, minimum, uh, x equal negative 3, y equal negative 4, and the function value is minus 13 uh, in 10 iterations. But this can definitely be uh, too large, so if our step is 10, then the function does explode, because um, it is not uh, small enough to pick up uh, the real minimum and maximum values. So please do play around with those values. Uh, the step 1 value can be as small as you can allow it to be, whereas step two, if it's too large, the gradient descent will explode and not reach the uh, optimal value, whereas if uh, we have got uh, a too small of a value, then the uh, convergence will be slow. So definitely experiment with those values for applications. Finally, uh, this function quite clearly does not have a maximum because if x and y grow to infinity, the function does grow to infinity. But just to reinforce that, if we change those subtract commands to add, that would be how the gradient descent would go to find a maximum. We'll see that it explodes because the function does indeed have no maximum value in this uh, particular example. 
this is very similar to what uh, a nonlinear gradient descent algorithm does to find uh, minima and maxima of functions when you're using solver. This is exactly what is going behind the scenes at this black box. And obviously, this particular tutorial can help you understand what the procedure you're using when writing solver is all about. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics related to record. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider support on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.